So welcome back, um, my name's Tom Lamb, if you're new to the channel. And uh, the project we're on with at the moment is um, these, these little black things here. So I'm calling this the bail blaster. So um, we tested this the other day and it worked quite well. We've got a few of the tests that we're gonna do today and uh, we've got the big tank here now, so they're gonna be a lot more powerful than what they were. So I've just made this. This is a Y piece. So basically what happens is the feed tube comes in here and then we can divert, divert it off because I want to run two jets on each side of the compressor. So this jet here will be here. There'll be one under the axle. So one side of the compressor will do this jet and that jet. And then the other side of the, compre uh, other side of the compressor, not compressor, the other side of the tank, um, will do another jet this side, the other side, and then there'll be another jet at the front on the slip clutch at the front, the slip clutch is the most likely part to catch fire. I think 80% of baler fires comes from that slip clutch. So keeping it clean is absolute key to prevent fire from uh, these sorts of machines. So that's one of the things we're trying to do. We're trying to prevent builds up of dust, bits of straw like this, you know, if over, the, over the course of the day, these can get absolutely covered in dust and straw and be a massive, massive fire risk. So if I thought, well, if we can keep it clean throughout the day whilst keeping the operator in the cab clean, you're onto a winner. So let's have a look at what we're doing. Um, we've got, got, like I say, we've got this, we're gonna test the fire extinguisher on this first. So I've like plumbed a fire extinguisher into the line as well. So um, we'll just have a go and see what happens. So this is um, my fire extinguisher bottle. Um, my idea is, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I wanted like a two tier fire extinguisher. So like fill it up to here with foam. And then when it sits on the bale blaster, we'll sit it upside down and then compress this with carbon dioxide. So, cause everyone was like, oh, you can't use air. It'll just make the fire worse. Well, if it's compressed with carbon dioxide and it uses the same lines and shoots foam and carbon dioxide out of those jets we've just had a look at, I, I can't see why that wouldn't extinguish a fire. So uh, we'll have a look at that. We're just getting ready for the uh, fire extinguisher test now. Uh, basically, it's ever so simple how it works. It just teed off a fire extinguisher into these same lines and um, using these same lines and these same jets, um, hopefully, instead of putting air out, it'll put carbon dioxide out and, um, and uh, not foam, but uh, powder. So if you can imagine these doors, like this one here, they'll all be completely shut. So it'll be a very enclosed area. So hopefully it will just fill the whole thing with, well, powder and carbon dioxide. And if there is a fire in here, it's just gonna put it out. And um, because there's gonna be two fire extinguishers on it, like I said, one to each side line. So one fire extinguisher will do this jet here underneath, the other side will do that side and that side. So you can set both the fire extinguishers off together and it will completely just cover the whole baler with powder and carbon dioxide. The Bale Blaster Fire Extinguisher Test number one. I'm getting out of the way. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? It's, um, well, there ain't gonna be a fire under here now, is there? Um, I've actually got one more tank of this, uh, this powder, so I'm gonna try it and see if I can get a slow motion video of it. So let's do that. I deem that a great success. Everything is covered, look, in powder. If there's a fire just here, it ain't gonna last. And remember there's four jets as well. So this side, that side, under here is the main fire hazard. I mean, look, it's even come through here as well, but this is the main fire hazard just here, the, the, the front slip clutch. So uh, if all four jets go off together, like that, probably obviously it'll only half, be a half the amount of powder, but there's plenty of powder there, look, it's everywhere. So half the amount of powder, that was literally only three kilograms of powder. So that's literally like only a few handfuls of powder, which yeah, brilliant. I'll just blow it down and get it in, try the other jet as well. It's everywhere. even 
all down here. After using that and blowing it, can you can you see all these little seeds everywhere? Look. What that is, it's linseed. And the first job this baler did this year was do some linseed baling. So can you that's been on there for the whole season and I've not even known. So that doing that has now blown all these bits of linseed off. So that's the importance of trying to keep the baler clean and uh, not transfer weed seeds between other fields. So if we can keep the baler as clean as possible when we go on to the next field, hopefully we won't be transferring weed seeds like black grass or rye grass, whatever people struggle with. And then hopefully, you know, it means the use of less chemicals to try and kill these weed seeds because if they're not there in the first place, we won't need to try and kill them. So that was the fire suppression system, the Tom Lamb fire suppression system. So if you can imagine um, the jet underneath, which I'll show you in a minute, um, I'm gonna uh, plumb that up as well. Um, the jet on the side, the jet the other side, and the jet onto the front slip clutch. That'll pretty much cover the whole baler with uh, fire retardant powder and carbon dioxide. So if you do have a fire, flick the switch. It, I would have thought it would extinguish it, but say if it doesn't, it probably just buys you enough time to go and find the cause of the fire and put it out or pull the pin on it and just drive off so it could save the tractor. So the next thing, I've got this little thing here. This is gonna go on top of the tank. We've got a few different outlets and stuff on here. So we've got two regular, uh, so we've got two um, gauges. So we can see, this is the inlet. So this comes from the tractor to the top of the tank. We've got a pressure release valve just here, which um, it shouldn't be used because the tractor will only get up to like 120 odd PSI, but say if we do need to do that. Then we've got a outlet here, which I'm gonna screw on and show you what that's for. And I've got another outlet here. And then in the middle here, we've got a, another regulator as well, so we can turn the air up or down. So yeah, let's go and get this on the tank and show you what these other two outlets are for, because I've had another idea. So we've fitted that on the top now, it just screws in the top of the tank, just up there. And then we've got this. So I need to make a hook somewhere, or I might, you'll be able to unplug it, because it just like, it only plugs in very easily. So that will just hold on just there. And this is an external airline, so you can go around here like this. Go around and block. If we've got any like, you know, bits that the jets can't get to, we'll go around and we'll just block. Or like any bits in around the knotters and anything that you can't get to because we've got such a vast amount of air in this tank here we can uh, we can use it to do other things so um yeah well if we get under the axle that jet that's under the axle if it can't get to any bits on top of the brakes and stuff you know because it's going to be able to do the majority of it but there are going to be places that those air jets can't get to so we'll be able to use this to go around and just and then when you're done with your airline Ring compartment really would fit in there like that nicely tucked out the way and then that bit that probably sit in there like that shut the door you'd never even know it's there so the other outlet that i've got on there because i've got um I've got two outlets obviously one for the um these are only small outlets so One's obviously for that pipe we just looked at for blowing down. The other one, I thought it would be a really good idea to have a central tyre inflation system because everyone's on about that at the moment, aren't they? With compaction on their fields and, you know, people are like, oh yeah, we need to make sure that we're looking after the soil and all that. So, off that other valve up there, we can then run another system, which will then go to these tyres, which when you're in the field, will let the tyres up and down to obviously re reduce soil compaction which will be, uh, that'll be interesting because, because we've got such a big, um, because we've got such a big tank here, we should be able to let the tires up and down really fast. Whereas on like a normal machine on a tractor, because the tank's not very big, it'd probably take like three or four, maybe five minutes to let the tires up and down from like maybe six PSI to 10, 15 PSI. But because we've got so much air on board, which is gonna be hopefully always full, we should be able to let these two big tires up and down really quickly. So this is the new and improved and bigger tank. So this is 
not far off twice the size of what we've been using. So I thought I might as well show you it, but there's a few bits that are very sensitive that we can't show. But uh, also as well using a bigger tank, obviously it's got different fittings. So one of my valves there, don't fit on here so now i've got to get some different valves which is uh, very annoying because i was hoping to uh, video this going off today but well, i'll do it another day anyway um also made this showed you earlier a big y section so what happens is at the ends of these holes we saw a minute ago obviously we've got a valve 90 degree and then down here i'll probably fit it here somewhere out of the way we've got a uh, a y section yeah, I could do with some valves really. There's a bloke who commented on here a couple of days ago saying they sell all the proper valves and everything. So I don't know where you are. If you could send me a comment back, um, that'd be really helpful. So yeah, valve goes on there and then um, we'll put a T piece into the top because the two fire extinguishers go on each side. One coming this side, one coming on that side. Down here into a T piece, 90 degree bend. That pipe goes up there, look and we'll sit it just there so it's nice and compact. And then just here, obviously this uh, Y piece that I made will sit just here like this. And then from there, that pipe will then go down here onto the axle. And then this one here goes to um, other jet at the front. And then the same for the other side. We don't need two on the axle. So that side will go one to the um, front slip clutch and one to the other side, and I think that should be enough, really. I'm quite excited about testing this, but um, yeah, a bit of a shame about that, really, because I'd like to have uh, got it up and uh, up and running. But anyway, it's one of them things. You know, it's very good. What do you think to it? Let me know in the comments what do you think to it. I don't, still don't know if it's a stupid idea or not, but yeah. And then on here is where the uh, valve will sit, but completely wrong size, so um, I need two inch two inch to two inch but let's pretend the valve's there and then on the valve goes that pipe and we'll put two of them on there down there big valve and then the electronics or whatever or the air operated will go that way back to the cab and this this sit nice and neat we could either sit it there like that and then uh you know we could put that that will sit on there like that so there's nothing ever that's going to be in the way so it, it'll be out of the way all the time, which is great. Y piece just here, like we said, down to there. And then that one, we can run it straight through there. And you can see the valve, look, it's not very far away, look. It's only just there. So we could run the pipe up and then up over the top and straight into it. So we've only probably got one, two, we're only gonna need about three, three and a half meters worth of pipe just for this side. And then the other side will probably need six. So that's not a lot at all. Another thing that's worth mentioning as well, you can actually move these wherever you want. So it's it's really down to operator preference. So if you wanted to move that to like these two bolt holes up here, so it's like fanning down instead, you could do that. So it's um it's a real, real simple piece of kit. And uh, that's what I like. That's what I like about it. Nice and simple and easy to use. Don't get me wrong, I think there's a lot of things we've got to work on yet. Like... As I've said before, these jets here, I think they might need squeezing closed a bit, but I don't know because the uh, the fire powder earlier actually came out really well. So, um, yeah, still really pleased that it looks brilliant, doesn't it? So another question I was asked in one of the last videos was, what happens if you don't have air on your tractor? Because obviously most modern tractors now come standard with air. I think they've got to come with air now for the air brakes. So what happens if you don't have air on your tractor? You couldn't have this system. Well, let me show you. On the front flywheel, we have a belt which drives an external hydraulic motor, which then goes up and drives the knotter blowers, which work very, very well. It wouldn't be very hard at all to retrofit just on top of this or to the side or have another belt, a little air compressor that just slowly trickles away and pumps the uh, big air tank up on top. So that is a very simple thing to do. So a few things there, um, we'll just have a little recap. So we've got the um, reduce uh, fire risk, which is a massive reduction because obviously the cleaner the machine, uh, the more, the less likely it is to um, catch fire. 
Um, we've got the operator cleanliness. Obviously, if you're sat in the machine and you have to get under the machine, like I said in one of the last videos, you have to get under the, to that rear axle to tie the string. There can be straw and all sorts of bits everywhere, and it's fine. You get under there, you start tying it, you get a little gust of wind come underneath, and it just all falls in your face, it's in your eyes, it's in your ears. It's horrible. So I thought, you're never going to be able to retie a string very easy. So I thought, well, if we can clean what's under there by sending a jet of air off, blow it all everywhere, get rid of it all before we go under there, it's going to be a lot better to go under there and retie the string. Uh, obviously, we talked about the ground compaction, so that'll be on the tyres, so we'll do that soon at some point as well, because that'll be quite easy to do as well, to be fair. Um, and then the transfer of weed seeds. You know, if we can, we've finished a field, clean it down, <laughs> touch of two or three switches or whatever it's going to be, that cleans the baler. We're never going to get rid of all of it, but if we could get rid of 80% of weed seeds, it's going to make a massive difference to transferring weed seeds around to different fields. So yeah, I'd like to hear everyone's feedback. You know, what do you think to it? Are you a baler operator? What do you think? You know, because this can also be retrofitted to combines as well. It's so easy to do. It's literally four bolts hold the tank down. Really, really easy. So I'd like to put it on a combine next and have it clean in like uh, the gearbox underneath where it can get hot down the sides. Under the engine, those jets, we can get them under the engine as well to clean all the dust out because the, under the engine can get very hot and there's a there's a big fire risk of that there as well. What else could we put it on? Maybe ram balers, but the trouble is with the ram baler, there's not a lot of room to fit a tank. So uh, where would I like to see this going? Um, it'd be great. It'd be great to integrate it into the tractor screen or into the baler screen. So it's all done. It's all integrated into the baler. Um, that'd be That'd be really good actually, wouldn't it? Because then you haven't got extra switches. It's all it's already in the screen. You could set it so that the jets go off at different intervals, like maybe 30 minutes every half an hour, every hour, whatever you want. But you know, that's a, I'll be honest with you, that's a little bit complicated for me. You know, I could really do like a manufacturer saying, oh, we like this idea. We'll we'll take you on and build it to do whatever. But anyway, let me know what you think, and um, we'll go from there. I'll see you all again soon. See you later.